video I told you all about something that when we move at a very fast speed, uh, say 99.5% the speed of light, the time observed by us, observed by our watches, it kind of slows down uh, with respect to stationary people. Now the thing is that uh, we don't really get to do more work. Although the time slows down, we don't get to do more work. So why is that the case? Uh, know the answer to that exactly in this video. Also, we will be talking about a real life uh, example of relativity, uh, time dilation. And so, let's begin. So, life on the run and a lot more. So, let's begin. In the last video, we talked about a certain catch that if we mo uh, move at 99.5% the speed of light, we would live 10 times longer, but we would not be able to do 10 times as many things. So why is that the case? Why does that happen? Uh, let's find the answer to that exactly in this video. So the thing is, time dilation is not just about the watches worn by us. It's also about the activities we might undertake. Okay, so if we are doing something, uh, it's as if we are living life in slow motion. For our stationary counterparts, uh, it's like we are living life in slow motion. So if I took uh, 5 hours to do something, okay, now when I am moving 99.5% the speed of light, instead of 5 hours, it will take me 50 hours. And for me, each hour will be 10 hour long. So basically, all the things I do will take a longer time. So the amount of work that we get done in one lifetime doesn't really change. Uh, time dilation might uh, make us experience time way slower than our stationary counterparts. But we can't get more things done. Okay, so that's the trick, that's the catch that uh, going on a spaceship and we are experiencing time dilation, when we come back to Earth, we don't get more things done. For us, the time that we experience is absolutely normal. But for the people around us, they have aged way higher. So like uh, a twin brother experiment. There were two twin brothers and one went off to space at a very high speed. Uh, at a very high speed. What happened was that when uh, the one in space came back on Earth, uh, he aged less. But he really didn't do many more things. So if the brother who aged more, he could do things say of 5 years, the brother who aged less, he did only things of 1 year. So the time slows down, but also the activities that we undertake, they also slow down. This is a very important catch, I guess. So yeah, that's it. Now, let's take the example of a muon. Stationary muons disintegrate by a process closely akin to radioactive decay in an average of about 2 millionths of a second, so it's a very short period of time. After this time, it explodes into electrons and neutrinos. When these muons are not stationary, but they are traveling through particle accelerators at very high speeds, uh, say 99.5% the speed of light, their lifetime increases drastically, so they live a lot longer. But as stated previously, activities they undertake will not be any more than what they would have been, uh, what they would have had they been stationary. So had they been stationary, the activities they had done, the same things they are doing, but taking a lot longer and so they live for a lot longer rather than two millionths of a second. So they live a lot longer than that. So yeah. So now this is a very real life experiment, okay. This is something that actually we can observe, we can understand, and that is the muon decay. Uh, when it is stationary, the muon, it decays in a very short period of time into electrons and neutrinos. But when we are moving the muon in particle accelerators, so it's kind of like moving, uh, it's moving at a very high speed. And because of that, it decays way later. It takes some time to decay. So this is a very real life example of time dilation. That neons which move at a very fast speed uh, in particle accelerators, they live way longer and they decay in a process that's quite similar to radioactive decay. 
So it's a very, very real life example. So you can see the muon's picture somewhere here. So yeah, it's a real life example, I guess. Now, for conceptual clarity, let's understand why the very concept of time is wrong. For this, we will have to understand the story of forward land and backward land. So, let's do exactly that. So, this is a analogy to understand why our concept of relativity is important. That is what exactly it is. Okay, we are taking it a uh, table. Okay, there are two warring nations and they are going to sign a contract to stop fighting with each other and now neither of them wants to sign the contract first they want to sign it exactly at the same time okay so a plan came up uh, the secretary of the united nations came up with a plan what was that plan that plan was that there'll be a light source there'll be a table there'll be a long table and there'll be a light source in the middle of the table exactly and Whenever the light will reach the eyes of both the, uh, you know, representatives of the nation, they'll sign the paper. That's the idea. There'll be a long table, the two representatives of the two nations. Now, the names of the two nations uh, are forward land. This is forward land. This is backward land. So, forward land, backward land. Okay. And so, their representatives are sitting on two sides of the table. There is this flash bulb in the middle of the table exactly and the moment the light reaches their eyes as soon as it is switched on they'll sign the paper so both of them sign the paper at the same time no problem now another example the second time the same thing is going to happen but this time it will be in a moving train because they are all in a hurry and they need to sign it in the train they don't have time to sit anywhere so same thing they are putting the table on the train and light is in the middle and forward land backward land they are sitting on two sides of the table forward land backward land right this is the light be careful about this now when the light is switched on and they reach the uh, light is reached in their respective eyes and they sign the paper now war starts forward land claims that it has been duped that uh, the representatives of forward land they signed the paper first. So the light reached forward lang first before backward lang. Why did that happen? Pretty simple explanation as such. This is forward land. This is backward land. I repeat, this is forward land. This is backward land. You will see when they move kind of. Okay, when they are moving, what happens is that forward land is moving towards the light. Whereas backward land is moving away from the light. Forward land is moving towards the light. Backward land is moving away from the light. Therefore, when the light is coming, it has to travel less distance when it is talking about forward land. So forward land is coming, it has to travel less distance. And for backward land, it has to travel more distance. So that's exactly the problem. And because the speed of light is a constant, for traveling more distance, the time taken will be more. Right, because the speed of light is a constant. Again, these are concepts we previously kind of co uh, covered uh, and so it shouldn't be really that hard to understand why the light reaches the representative of forward land before backward land. Because forward land is traveling towards the light. Backward land is traveling away from the light. That's the problem. So they can claim that they have been duped. So what is the conclusion from all this? The conclusion is that when who is correct? More importantly, who is correct? Are they duped? Did forward land sign it before backward land? In a way, both of them are correct. Okay. The thing about relativity is that two things that happened simultaneously, according to one perspective, may not have happened uh, simultaneously according to another perspective. This is one of the startling conclusions of relativity. And this is interesting, definitely. And this is worth a thought. So I really hope this little story has helped you in understanding a bit more the true nature of time. Now it's time for another paradox. Now let's say muon A. There are two muons in this scenario. Let's say muon A is moving and muon B is stationary from our perspective of course. So let's change our perspective now. 
to mayonnaise so mayonnaise is the moving one right so according to mayonnaise as discussed earlier mayon b is moving because it's stationary according to itself right and so mayon a should disintegrate first right because it is not moving it is stationary according to its own perspective so if it is not moving time dilation won't occur and therefore it should dis uh, disintegrate first right but that is not what happens the uh, in reality the opposite thing uh, seems to be true so what's the reason for this discrepancy again if you haven't been able to understand what i just said uh, let me just repeat myself mayon a is moving mayon b is stationary but according to mayon a it has the right to claim that mayon b is moving and mayon a itself is stationary we discussed this in our previous videos therefore the one that is moving is supposed to disintegrate later the one that is stationary is supposed to disintegrate first right so according to mayon a it should disintegrate first but that is not what happens in reality the opposite seems to be true so what is the reason for this discrepancy stay tuned to know the answer keep watching so stay tuned to know the answer and also subscribe to my channel right here also uh, you can check out my previous videos right here so i really hope you enjoyed this and keep watching and see you in my next video